Amen. Father, we thank you. What a joy, what an opportunity when you give us women of God who can just come and give their lives to bless all of us. We want to speak your anointing and your blessing upon our sister Irina as she ministers and shares with us. May you be glorified and all we can say this evening is Holy Spirit come in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good evening, ladies. Praise the Lord. God is good. And all the time, I thank God so much. I have come with my Kamulika so that, uh, you know, when you're here, you get nervous to see that clock so that I don't uh, take much time. And uh, I thank God for his goodness. I thank God for his mercy which endureth forever, great is his faithfulness. I'm honored to be here tonight to speak to us on emotional healing. And before I go into the topic, I know my friend Dr. Emma is here. She'll be reading for us the word as she comes. She's a cardiologist by profession. That's what she does. She treats, you know, the physical heart. But because she's also born again, she, you know, she, she has a calling, you know, towards the emotional heart. And she's also my co-founder at PDI. She gave me the first check, 150000 And that is how I started the work that I've been doing in the marketplace for the last nine years. So why don't we celebrate God for Dr. Emma? Uh, before she reads the word, allow me to acknowledge mom, Martha and the leadership of the She Conference Consolata, together with all the other leaders. In absentia, we also thank God for Pastor Ambrose and Pastor Simon and the entire leadership of Parklands Baptist Church. I come with greetings from Femme Family Church, where I fellowship. Uh, one of my pastors, Reverend Lucy, sent me with greetings on her behalf and on behalf of the church. Do you receive them? And I also bring you greetings from my biological mother and my grandmother. And with that, we can go into the word of God. And as media team gives us the first clip just before Dr. Emma reads the scripture, I want to declare the word of the Lord. And the word of the Lord is in Psalms 147.3. And it says, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. So by the authority of the word of God, I declare to every one of us tonight that because Jesus heals the brokenhearted and binds up our wounds, that every one of us is going to receive healing. Amen? So give your neighbor a high five and tell them, Dr. Jesus is in the house. And he heals the brokenhearted and binds up our wounds. And now let's have a physical doctor reading the word of God for us. Our first reading is from Genesis chapter 1. That is easy to find. It's the first book in the Bible. We'll read from verse 26. If you find it, can you say amen? amen? Then God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image image, in the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I will give you every, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it, they will be yours for food. And to the beasts of the earth and all the birds of the air and all the creatures that move on the ground, everything that has the breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food, and it was so. God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. 
good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Let's turn to the book of Luke. Luke is the third gospel. If you go to the New Testament, you'll find Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Just find your way to the very last chapter of the book of Luke, chapter 24. We will read from verse 36. Are we there? While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled? Why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I'm going to send you what my father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. When he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. Then they, just a second, when he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. The final portion of scripture is in the book of Ephesians, the first chapter. We will read verse 3 to 9. Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 3. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in, heaven, in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ in, according, in accordance with his pleasure and will. To the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. And he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ. That's the word of the Lord. Thank you very much. 
As Dr. Emma takes her seat, I also want to acknowledge Reverend Becky. I was so blessed last night. I was watching online. Eunice Jerry, powerful ministry, my sister, I bless you. I came with a team from PDI. If you can just quickly stand up. We have Anne there. We have Mary. We have Paris. Please stand up. Uh, we have Jules. We have Stella. We have Jane Muna. Upstairs, we have Angie. We have Gladys and some of them. Thank you very much for coming to minister with me tonight. So we've read many scriptures. Uh, because over Easter, I am 44 years young and I am single, never married, but at 44 years, I have attempted to be married. And you know at 44, you have attempted. In fact, as I was wearing this dress today, next to it is the wedding gown for the wedding which should have taken place in 2012. The cards had gone out. The venue had been paid, Mount Kenya Safari Club in Anyuki. We had done, the, out of the 10 counseling sessions in church, we had done nine, because the last one, you know the last one is usually the last one, because it has some deep stuff, isn't it? Why are you looking at me like you don't know? So the last one is the one we were to do, and then something happened, and of course the wedding never took place. And I found everything happening this week very prophetic because just like my would have been to husband who is now a husband to somebody else just called to check on me. And then a PDI alumni, oh, and those who are watching online, you know, I love Facebook. Bless you, online people. God bless you. So yesterday on Facebook, a PDI alumni tagged me to a graduation photo of a PDI class. And that time I used to have an engagement ring. And so she tagged me. And of course, when you're tagged, see the photo appears. And then people are wondering now, how come she's still single? And I'm saying all this to connect to why we have read many scriptures. Over Easter, one of the advantages of being single at my age is that you can choose just to sit back and be by yourself. And I realized that by divine... Yes, I appreciate the single people. Sometimes married women, and I look forward to marriage someday, they want to do that, but it's not possible, isn't it? There is husband here, there are babies here, so it becomes a bit hard. Is it true? For married women to have me time, isn't it? So I had all the me time to myself. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I didn't even go to church. Let me make a confession. And Monday. And I found myself immersed in a Bible study. And it was actually around these scriptures that we have read tonight. And I, at the end of on Monday, I remember taking Holy Communion and thinking, Lord, I don't know why you have, you know, caused me to be in a Bible study this season. Then a Thursday, like I think two Thursdays ago, I wake up from a dream. And in that dream, I'm preaching at Parklands Baptist Church. So I wake up from that dream. And that same day at 3 p.m., I get a call from Reverend Judy Mbogwa saying she had forwarded my name for me to speak at Parklands. And so I knew that this Bible study for Easter was not just for me, but it was for us and anyone watching this word online and anybody else who will watch it later. And because I know time is much gone and when you know time is gone, you sort of uh, panic. I think I'm just going to skip. I, I had come with a whole curriculum. We will finish on Saturday. Don't worry. Uh, you know, and I want to show you something in scripture. In Genesis, media team, you, I know I'm not following the slide, we will just flow. In Genesis, you find that God blessed man, isn't it? Tell your neighbor the blessing was ever before the curse came into the earth realm in Genesis. You know, God blessed man. And God also gave man a dominion mandate to be fruitful, to increase and to multiply. We skip the law and the prophets and Jesus comes to fulfill all that and he dies and he resurrects. And I want you to take time to study Luke 24 at your own time, the whole chapter. But the portion that Dr. Emma has read is where Jesus comes in and the disciples are actually in disbelief, isn't it? And he's wondering, how slow are you to believe these things? They are actually thinking that it is a ghost. Tell your neighbor, don't ever confuse Jesus for a ghost. You know? 
And so that Jesus could help them in their understanding, he asks for fish. And the Bible records that he's given fish and he eats to prove to them that a ghost does not eat. Look, I am eating. And the Rema word for this tonight, I know I'm talking about emotional healing, but the Rema word that God gave me over Easter for myself, and it is the message I bring to Parkland's Baptist Church, is found in that chapter where it says, and he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. Look at another sister seated next to you and say, I pray for you that he may open your minds that you may understand the scriptures. And later on in Ephesians 1.3, we find Saul, who is now Paul, having encountered God and having what is called the Pauline revelation. And he's talking about blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with heavenly blessing in the heavenly places. So I want to show you tonight the trinity of scripture. You're blessed in Genesis. When Jesus was leaving this earth, he was speaking a blessing. The Bible actually says that as he was blessing them, he was taken up. And just in case somebody else didn't get it, God makes Paul to communicate revelation knowledge that we are blessed with every blessing. But you know what? We tend to focus on our emotional pain, and the things that are not working, that it is easy to forget the blessing. And I remember as I began to prepare to come and speak, I asked the Holy Spirit, why is it that people go through emotional pain? And I have gone through a lot of emotional pain. I stand here as a testimony of God's grace. I know I look beautiful. I do. I really just do. Because I checked myself and I've also seen when we were doing praise and worship. <laughs> you know, some of the reason people get offended in church, my mother, is because no one has told them they are smart and they put a lot of effort into it. I came to tell you, learn to tell yourself. <laughs> Don't wait. If it comes from other people, let it be just an added advantage. But learn to be your own best friend. I have gone through a lot of emotional pain, so I, have, I know I'm deeply loved by Jesus. In fact, when I talk about Jesus, it is never how much I love him, because I could never love him enough. It's about how much he loves me. And second to the love of Jesus and that of my mother and my grandmother, I am blessed with a very loving mother and grandmother. I also love myself. Tell your neighbor some of your wounds will be healed as you love on you. Because some of you are waiting for somebody else to love you. And it's a blessing, especially when a man loves you. But if that was true, all married women would be happy. Sometimes they are not. <laughs> I know I'm speaking from experience. And I have the permission of Dr. Emma to say these things because she's my very close friend, co-founder. She's married with three beautiful children. And there are times, Aboretam knows our name, because there are times we have gone to Aboretam. She drives a Mercedes, but we put a lesser on the ground. Me, I drive, you want to know what I drive? I started by driving a Vitz, yet I'd have everybody coming to PDI, driving Mercedes, driving Lexus, I don't know, driving Prados, because we would have pilots in PDI, a government ambassadors, Mama Mbogas. Tell your neighbor, it is not what you drive. It is what drives you. Some of your emotional wounds. I am driven by purpose. I am driven by a passion for the Lord. So Dr. Emma and I have sat at Aboretum. She, I asked for her permission to say these things. So if you're cringing for her, she's okay. You know, and would sit there and cry. Sometimes we would be crying because of my own emotional pain. Because now... It would be another broken relationship. That one for 2012 is relationship I don't even know number what. I'll tell you on Saturday. I'll go and count. Because the first major one was when I was 21 years, you know, at Utali College. And you know our African brothers. He was the CU chairman. I was the CU secretary. You know? 
and I was celebrating my 21st birthday. And he came to my room and he said, I have a gift for you. And the gift was, you know, the, 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 um, the green, like they are yellow and green bags, pa plastic paper bags that used to be big. So that was what was in the gift. And I'm wondering, what is this gift? So I removed from the paper bag and there are flowers. And I'm like, who brings flowers? Well, I still appreciate him. But you know, flowers should be brought <laughs> like with a style. So that was relationship number one. We dated for quite some time. We were both born again, spirit-filled. I've been spirit-filled since the age of 14 with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. So people don't get hurt because they don't love the Lord. Tell, tell your neighbor you love the Lord, but you still get hurt. And that is why the, Jesus himself told us, cheer up. In the world you will have tribulations. But he said to what? Cheer up, I have overcome the world. Jesus did not say for us to have a pity party. So we dated with my friend. He's now happily married. They live in the UK. And uh, yeah, and I'm also happy. <laughs> yes, I'm happy. I'm not depressed. Neither am I jealous. And so, because he was working in a hotel, you know, when you go to Tali, you mostly like, you know, you work in hotels. I'd visit him in Mombasa, and I'd sleep the night. See, now we are saved, so we are not having sex. Tell your neighbor, do you understand that gospel? Because today we have a different generation. So I'd end up sleeping in another sister's house, who we were all together in college, you know, for accountability and then travel back to Nairobi. Then he would also come and visit me in Nairobi because his parents lived here. Then in one of his visits, he said, I have news for you. And so I waited, you know, hoping finally the engagement is coming. I was given a wedding invitation card and he was marrying my friend whom I would sleep. So when I tell you that I have gone through emotional pain, I know what I am talking about. It's from my personal experience. And in between, there are many others. Maybe one more. 2005, that one I'll not forget. <laughs> because, you know, five goats lost their lives to the ceremony. Dowry payment. I was already working in the bank by that time. So I remember all my bank friends coming all the way to Nakuru to the ceremony. Uh, his dad had come from the U.S. of A. They are Kenyans, but living in the U.S. to pay dowry. And of course, he had come with a beautiful engagement ring. Tell your neighbor, yo ilikuja through the airport. You know, because it, it was among the, you know. And to cut a long story short, you can see I'm still single. <laughs> You're blessed with five things. You're blessed with a divine assignment, and that we call purpose. You are blessed with divine cheer, and that is what gives you increasing faith. You are blessed with divine interventions in your life. We call that grace. You are blessed with divine timelines. We call that patience. And you are blessed with divine glory. We call that your redefined story. And I want to say this. According to the word of God, weeping may endure for the night. But joy comes in the morning. So it is okay to cry because the word of God says weeping may endure for a night. Psalms 35. But joy comes in the morning. And I came to speak to two people. A people that are in a weeping season. I do not want to assume that everybody in this service is in their morning season. There are some of you that are actually weeping for different things. It may not be broken relationships like me. It could be a marriage that is not going as you expected it to go. You could be weeping because of children and especially teenagers who are in a stage of, you know, rebellion. Probably they are into drugs or they are not just serving the Lord as they should. Some of you could be weeping because of career issues. Some of you could be weeping because of business issues. I don't have time to go there, but I have also wept because of business. This PDI that people talk about, in fact, at some point, and Dr. Emma knows that season, there's a season we, you know, we had good cash flows, almost close to 100 million Kenya shillings. We even moved offices to Karen. 
then business went south and we had to fold up and downsize. And I can tell you the shame, the embarrassment, some coming even from my own PDI students saying the things she was teaching us are not now working for her. So some of you could be in shame because your business or your career is not going right. Some of you could be weeping because your finances are not right. And I wish I could stand here and say I'm debt free, but I am not. Because when my business went down, I found myself in a crisis that affected both my business cash flows and also my personal finance. So if you're in a weeping season, maybe you've lost a loved one. You know, you've lost a child, a husband, you're widowed. You could be in a weeping season. But what I want you to know is that God says it is just a season. Because it says weeping may endure for a night. It doesn't say weeping may endure day and night. It says what? But what comes in the morning? And I came to speak to you because some of you are in your morning season. You're in a season where joy has come. And you need not to feel, you know there are people because now you're in a morning season where the joy has come and some are in their night season where they're still crying. You almost want to apologize for your joy. Tell your neighbor, give me my space. Because you are not there in my night season. I will encourage you in the night season, but you also celebrate me when the joy comes. You know, emotional healing, Luke 24, 45 is the key. Then he opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. It is very important for you to know that God's people perish or are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And that is the Rema word I bring to you tonight. Even when you're going through emotional pain, as long as he can open up your mind to understand the scriptures, that joy comes in the morning, you will be in a good place. When I went through the first broken, the, the second major one, where they had now paid dowry, and I was already working in the bank, I remember going to my spiritual authority in FEM and just saying, you know, mom, I feel confused. That same week, the engagement was broken. I had also won a green card you know, green card, how you win over the internet, it's just lottery. And then finally, after a process, the day came, I've remembered one of my girlfriends works for the US Embassy anyway, the day came when I presented myself to the embassy and see it's green card, so I'm assured. And I was not given the visa, that's why, how come I'm still here? And so when I went to my spiritual authority, I was battling two losses. The loss of a broken relationship, and the wedding had been planned and everything, and also the loss of this dream of going to the U.S. And all I remember, she said, you're a woman of prayer, and as you pray, God will speak to you. Huh? I walked away from her presence, and I thought, God is going to speak to me, me, Irene Moraithi. So I went to the bank, filled three days leave from my employer and locked myself in an SQ where I was living in Buruburu. And I said, God, I heard that you're going to speak to me. So I have made myself available. I am very serious and I take God and I also take ministers of the gospel, you know, who are sound at their word, as long as I can find a basis in the word of God. And it is through those three days that God said to me, the, the scripture that God used is when Paul said, you know, that he celebrates the hard time. He takes pleasure in his infirmities. And after those three days, I knew that the Lord wanted to take my brokenness and package it in a book. And that is how I wrote my first book called Celebrate the Hard Times. Why? He opened up my mind to understand the scripture. Some of you have gone through pain in your marriages. You have gone through pain in different areas of life. I want God to open up your mind so that you know what are you supposed to do with that pain. Look at your neighbor and tell them, never waste pain. Actually, in the kingdom of God, there is no waste. And if you want to know it is true, when Jesus was feeding the, you know, the 5,000, see, there was leftover. And he told them what? Collect it. 
So may God open your mind so that you can understand the scripture. People are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because when we go through pain, we imagine it is because you're cursed. I have been told that so many times. Unfortunately, I've even been told that by some pastors. That probably, you know, in your bloodline, these things don't just happen one after the other. But I asked somebody, Joseph was in the pit. Joseph was in Potiphar's house. Joseph was in prison. Was it a curse? It was a preparation for the palace. So I want you to understand that the reason that you go through pain is because you're blessed. And there is the trinity of scripture in Genesis, in Luke 24 when Jesus was ascending, in Ephesians 1, confirming that you're blessed. And that blessing is what the devil fights. And in the process of the devil fighting that blessing, that is how we end up with emotional pain. So tonight, may we draw near to the throne of grace so that we can find mercy to help us in our time of need. That time when you're hurting. And I like to say it is a throne of grace. It is not a throne of condemnation. And Reverend Becky yesterday preached about the woman who had been labeled a sinner. But Jesus picked her up. It doesn't matter. Some of you, you know your stories. You know we can all look together lovely in church, isn't it? But let's just say, sometimes, I know this as a life coach because people come to me. You can be in church loving God, but you're somebody else's mpango akando. Can we have some honest conversations? You can even be singing in the choir, but I'm not talking about this choir. <laughs> and sleeping around. Can we talk? Because sometimes when we have emotional pain, and especially for single, never married ladies, what happens when you're going through pain? We move from one relationship to the other out of rebound, isn't it? It's like you're trying to prove a point. And even if not proving a point to anybody else, to yourself that you're loved and you're accepted. I've been through a lot of rejection. But because I know how to go to the throne of grace, thank you Jesus. And I know it's not a throne of condemnation. Then God has sustained my life. So if you're having emotional pain because of a husband, take him to the throne of grace. Because sometimes when you take him to a Bible study, he becomes a topic for discussion. And you know how Christians we can be? We can tell gossip in the name of prayer points. <laughs> now, I have, you know, and you're just gossiping. But at the end you say, and therefore I wanted us to pray. <laughs> so learn to go to the throne of grace. Let us also realize as we come to have a night with the king, that he's a wounded king. The Bible calls him a man of sorrows. What a name. And being a man of sorrows, it means he understands the pain that you go through. Jesus understands the pain that I've gone through. You know, I've suffered a lot of rejection, as beautiful as I am. But I refused for that to become my label. Because I went to the wounded king, and I realized that in Isaiah 53.3, the Bible says that he was rejected. He was despised. So when I go to have my night with the king in his presence, I'm talking with one who's been rejected just like I have been. And he's able to understand me. So what kind of sorrow are you going through, woman, tonight? Understand that Jesus is a man of sorrows and he understands you. Actually, it says he's despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him, he was despised and we esteemed him not. That is the sinless Jesus. But then it says, by his wounds we are healed. And I actually realized, so we are actually healed by wounds. Isn't that a contradiction? We are healed. So now you understand when we go back to the first chapter uh, where we read, where I started, uh, 
and it says in Psalms 47, 3, that he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Because it is by his own wounds that we are healed. So as you fellowship with God over his word, understand that he's acquainted with grief. There is no amount of grief you can ever go through that Jesus would not understand. In fact, I guarantee us here, because medically Dr. Emma one would have to be checked out, but it, I think in the history of the world it is only Jesus who was so burdened that his sweat became like blood. Ask your neighbor, has your sweat even ever come close to blood? And if you're here, I'd like you to see Dr. Emma after that and any other doctor in the house. But Jesus, the sorrows, the troubles, the grief that he went through, and not because of a personal, you know, not because of just a relationship. Actually, it's because of a relationship, but a personal relationship with you. You're deeply loved women. I want you to understand, even if you're rejected by others, there's a place where you're accepted. And the Bible says that we are accepted in the beloved. And therefore, the confidence I have in life, the bounds I have in life, comes from knowing that I am accepted in the beloved. And let me tell you, because we are in church, some of us take this word. This is my Bible, and I think it is maybe the 12th Bible I have. Because this is all I have in life. In fact, when my mom was sending her greetings tonight, she told me, tell them, ya ulimwengu ya takwisha lakini neno litasimama. If it was not for the word of God, I think I'd be depressed, oppressed. Because rejection for me did not start with men in terms of the broken relationship. Rejection started at birth. In 2016, my mom was diagnosed with um, a brain cancer. And I remember we had really deep conversation. You know when people think they are going to transition, people open their hearts. And I remember mom telling me, that my brother, who is now in heaven, when he was little, the one I follow, when he passed on, that time they were like in and out of the marriage with dad. And so mom went to, from Nakuru to Naivasha to tell my father that Maura, my small brother, had passed on. And it is in that travel that I was conceived. So when my father heard that I had been conceived, he was like, no, we only wanted three children. Maura was the third one. So even when I was born, for six months, my dad never came to see me. And then later when they came together, you know, the domestics of, you know, issues with adults. I remember now growing up with him. And one night, you know, up country set up, there is the main house and there is the kitchen. So my mom would be in the kitchen and me, my father, and my father would be in the living room in the separate house. One time he came drunk banged the table so hard, I was probably six years, and he said, go and call your mother or I kill you. So when I discovered, when he opened up my mind to understand the scriptures, that I have a father in heaven, that is why I love Jesus with everything that I have. Because I found another father. Then I found a father who had given a son a son called Jesus, a son who loves me. You know, you've never sat my 2012 wedding that didn't take place. And I know even if my in-loves to have been are watching, they know I love them and I respect them. But we sat in meetings because my father in love to have been did not accept me. And he made it very public. So my boyfriend then, oh, see someone's husband now. So, you know, he would stand, I'm just remembering, you know, he would sit on my side and our family side, and this, then other, this other family would sit on this side. And he had a problem because we had an age gap. I was older. And he kept bringing, you know, the issue of the age and also the issue of education because he's a doctor, you know, and he wasn't seeing how his doctor son is marrying this girl who just talks to people. You know, talking is not seen like a serious career. 
me and Churchill, we are in those groups of careers where people are still trying to find, do you really have a job? And you cannot understand the pain of sitting across another human being, especially a father, rejecting you before arrival. So, remember, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And I want some of us to take a journey. I'll just take maybe five minutes on top of time because, you know, I was given the mic a bit late. Um, <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. So, I want some of us to take a journey back to our childhood. When it was announced, it's a baby girl. Oh, and the brothers in the house, we love you. God bless you. But I'm ministering mostly to the women. When it was announced, it's a baby girl. And your story of life began. And through the different season, media team, if you can give us those slides, the different season. Some of you are announced with balloons, you know, but most of you are born in the generation when this was not happening. But we might have a few. Most of us were born this way. It was a baby girl and your mother was also busy going on with life, isn't it? There were no balloons, there were no parties, there were no CG, what do we call them, jewels? Baby showers. I came for a baby shower the other day and I'm thinking, there were no baby showers those days. At least my age, if you're 40 and above. The others, maybe there were baby showers. And as you take, you know, your journey back from when it was announced it is a baby girl, some of us have gone through seasons of joy, but some of us have gone through seasons of weeping. Some of you had happy childhood. Give us that clip again of seasons of life. You know, your childhood was happy, but I also know some of you, your childhood was difficult. You know, there are children who grow. Me, it was difficult, but I didn't know. I only came to reflect on it later. And then you come to cry and to weep later in life. I read a lot of that on Facebook, all those different forums, what to do before marriage and something, all that. But it doesn't matter in what season of life you are. I came to announce to us the word of God that God heals the brokenhearted. And one of the things you need to do, ladies, is to guard your heart. Proverbs 4.23, above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. So your heart, in terms of your heart, H-E-R-T, and your heart, in terms of you crying, because we've all been through those seasons. Tell your neighbor, I know you look smart and all together lovely, but I know you have cried. Yeah, we have cried. All of us have cried. I don't know how married people do it, whether now you tell him to fast. I don't know, I don't know, because sometimes I cry a lot at night, and I'm just thinking, now if there was somebody else here, how does that work? Anyway, but the thing is, you have all, we have all cried. And some of you, actually, the reason you're crying is because of? this person. While on the other side across Mombasa Road where I stay, the reason I'm crying is because there is not this person. <laughs> Isn't life amazing? Some of you are crying because the children are driving you crazy. And some of you are crying because you're trusting God for a child. We cry for different reasons. But the good news is we can let go. When we cry, what are some of the emotions that we experience? Anger, bitterness, resentment, sadness. You know, when you're going through emotional pain of whatever nature, some of the emotions that you may experience are, you know, frustrations, doubt, media team, thank you. You know, regret, shame, rejection, loneliness. You know, it is not just us single people who are lonely. And single people, we need to have a heart even for the marriage. There are some people who are lonely in their marriages. Did you know that? Yes, it is true, and I don't even think it's a laughing matter. 
And I thank God because all my friends who brought me, they are actually all married. So I refuse to be in the pity party and in the party that feels jealous. You know, because some also some single, never married people are hard to deal with. Just seeing married women who are happy makes them jealous. Can we talk? They could be married but going through struggles and experiencing, you know, the sadness, the, the, the frustrations and all those negative feelings. But I came to tell us the real reason for pain, as I have explained, is because you're actually blessed. Genesis 1.28, Luke 24.50, and Ephesians 1.3. I want you to have a mind shift and realize the reason for your pain in marriage, in singlehood, in widowhood. Mama Nduta, please stand because I know I have your permission to say this. Mama Nduta, my friend. You know, Mama Nduta has been a widow for 20 years. Those of you who watch NTV, there's a program for Auntie Boss called, you know Auntie Boss, and there's Mama Kiare or Vanessa. Vanessa is her daughter. Yeah, you can see it. And she's been a widow for 20 years. And I can tell you that's a different kind of loneliness than the loneliness of somebody who's been single, never married. But once you understand that the blessing of the Lord maketh rich in all ways and adds no sorrow or stress to it, you will realize that God has blessed you no matter whatever pain you're going through. And somebody said, God has the power to open doors that have no drama behind them. So stop creating more drama on top of the pain that you already have for yourself. Some things are clearly not the word of God. For example, God will not be leading you to be somebody else's in the kingdom, you know, way of looking at things, to be somebody mpango wakando. And saying that, oh, the Lord has blessed me, that is not a blessing. That is adding drama to your life. I wish I had the time to tell you a story because my relationships have been many. <laughs> and there's a time I thought, oh, this is the real catch because this is an ideal situation. This man is born again. The wife has gone home to be with the Lord, so there's nothing wrong. This is now going to work. And you know he's mature, so unlike the younger one, so nobody's going to now be saying, but you, Irene, you're older. But I have said, when it is a blessing from the Lord, it has no drama with it. And he was also a man of substance. He had, he was blessed materially. But there was one condition that I could not fulfill. I will leave that for Saturday. <laughs> and because I could not fulfill that condition, we had to tell each other, goodbye, God bless you, goodbye, God bless you. Because this word is very clear. Yeah, let me not get there. Let me not get there. But you're mature. You know what I mean. Ah. So, do not allow yourself to have conversations with the contender of the blessing. In Genesis 3, 1, we see the serpent, and the Bible says, now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say that you must not eat from any tree in the garden? Media team clip. And if you look through the stories of the women in the Bible, the women who experienced emotional healing, you know, the other one, did God really say? It is because in the lives of all those women, the enemy was contending with the blessing. And Satan comes to ask you, did God really say? Did God really say? Like now me, I have been asked. Even my grandmother asked me. Even tonight she asked. All those places you go, haven't you? 
<laughs> haven't you been seen by anyone? So it is almost a version of, did God really say? Yet I know if I stood, which is the nearest stage here, to Kangemi somewhere there at that bus stop. And all I wanted is a man wearing trousers and a shirt. Siezi kosa. But I am careful of what God has really said. So be careful. Don't ever believe Satan's lies because Jesus said he's a liar and the father of all lies. And I want to finish at this. Maybe just one more slide. You know, every day of your life was recorded in God's book. So God is aware of the pain, the frustration, and everything else you're going through. And never ever forget that the reason for your pain is because and the enemy is contending with that blessing. So you've got to be smarter. Every day of your life is recorded in God's book. On Saturday, we will talk about divine assignment and some of those five points that I wanted to bring to you. I will teach you from the word of God how when you're going through the different timelines and seasons of your life, you should always remember you are blessed. You carry a divine assignment. The pain is not a sign of curses. There is a gospel going on in this city. People are even going back to their traditions. I see it on certain vernacular stations. Because we are almost being made to believe that what was done in this world is not enough. And people are thinking they are contending with generational curses. At the very beginning, God blessed man. So we are not contending with generational curses. We are actually contending with a generational blessing that has been given to us by God, but from which the enemy wants to take from us by bringing all kind of pain so that you become a depressed woman, so that you become a bitter woman, so that you become an angry woman. And the doctors will tell you that anger and all those negative emotions will actually cause physical disease. May we be transformed by the renewal of our mind. And I want you to go back home and look at your life. Whatever is not working, it is not because you're cursed. It is actually because you're blessed. Some of you going through financial problems because I have been there. I used to walk from this Westland to Don Home in the, before I started working in the bank. Simply because I didn't have 10 bob that can take me from Westlands into town and 20 shillings that can take me from town to Don home. Later when I bought my car, my first car was not even a VIT. My first car was a BMW. That story I will connect on Saturday. You know, I had somebody drive me. VIT was now like restoration when the BMW broke down because it was a second-hand one. <laughs> somebody drove me from Don home to Westlands and I realized it was 18 kilometers. I'd walk, I'd sleep hungry, I'd not have sanitary towels. I've used anything you can think somebody can use at that time of the month. But by grace, I stand. Because I realize I'm not fighting curses. I am contending for my blessing. And God has blessed me. Next month, I preach in Zimbabwe. Then I preach in South Africa. Then I have an invitation to preach in Australia. The other week, we were in Dubai with Jules. So I will teach you how to celebrate the hard times in your life because you realize what the enemy is fighting is the blessing that you carry. God bless you very much. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Listening to that. It is important just to gather yourself and look at the things that you've been going through and ask yourself, what does this mean to me? Listening to Irene, you would wonder, how do you go through all that and you still serve the Lord? 
having gotten born again at the age of 14. I got born again at the age of nine. And the one standing here speaking to you to make this altar go is also single, never married. <laughs> but one thing I'm realizing, what you go through in life is not because you are cursed. It's because God has a purpose for your life. And the reason we miss that purpose is because we focus on the pain and means to see the blessing that God has for us. We go through pain. We cry. But one thing I want us to remember through what I just said is weeping may endure for a night. But joy comes in the morning. And this night, it is someone's morning Amen. that God can fulfill his joy in your life. And how is that joy fulfilled? It is you by giving Christ a chance to rule in your life. We want that joy, but the giver of the joy is outside us. You must get a place and say, Lord, I'm giving you an opportunity. Come and fulfill my joy. The scripture she gave us in Luke chapter 24 and verse 45 says he opened their mind to understand scripture. Remember, he was with them. He opened their mind. He's got to be in you to open your mind. Don't look at him from outside. Would you give him a chance and say, yes, I've been in pain. I've cried. I've, I've gone through several things. I have so much of emotional pain. But remember, Jesus is the healer of our hearts. You give him your life. He will deal with your wounds. You give him your life. He will deal with your hearts. You give him your life. He will do the rest. As we bow our heads. Before the Lord. I want you to take a minute. And think about. Where is Christ? Yes I'm hurting. Yes I'm weeping. Yes I have all these emotional pains in my life. I have all these things happening around me. Is he Lord over my life? I know we will pray for each and every one of us that is facing different issues of life on Saturday as we complete. But tonight, I want to give you an opportunity to say yes to Jesus Christ. I want to give you an opportunity to give him your life and allow him to come in so that he can deal with that pain in your life. It may be Pain in your marriage. Pain in different ways of life. But he deals with every one of it. It may be in business. It may be in relationship. It may be some things that may, may not have been mentioned. But you know it is not easy. Would you give Jesus an opportunity? Would you give him a chance? Give him a chance and let him Rule over your life. As I make this prayer, let me ask, are you in this house? Having listened to this, you're saying, how can that happen? Is it possible? It is only possible if Jesus takes control over your life. And I want to give you an opportunity to say yes to him. And this is my call to you. Are you here? And Jesus is not Lord over your life. You love church. You love every service. You do good things. But you've never said yes to Christ. Or oh, one time you said yes to Christ. Things didn't go right. You gave up because it was painful. Tonight you can tell him Lord. I surrender to you. All to Jesus. I surrender. And if we surrender. He will receive us the way we are. He accepts us just as we are. Please, are you there? 
lift up your hand. Allow me to pray for you. You want to say, Jesus, be Lord and Savior of my life. Come in my life. I don't want to look for solutions when you are outside. I want you in me so that you can deal with what is hurting me. He's faithful to forgive us. It doesn't matter what it is that you did. It may be, you may be saying what I'm facing is because of my own mistakes. He's still willing to accept you the way you are. Please, wherever you are, would you lift up your hand and give me an opportunity to pray for you. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Just lift up your hand. Wherever you are, I will make a prayer. I'm going to make this prayer quickly because of our time. Don't be ashamed. Jesus has the solution for your life. He becomes Lord over every situation. Would you say yes to him? Would you just tell him, Lord, I invite you. Open my mind that I can understand scripture. So that I am not struggling with what is happening. But I know why I am facing what I'm facing. I'm giving you an opportunity. Are you there? Please, if you're lifting up your hand, lift it high so that I can see it because I've got to see it to know that you are there. Anyone? If you're lifting it up, I need to see it. So please, lift it up high. I'm willing to pray with you. I'm willing to pray with you. If you're lifting it up, just lift it up. Don't get worried. Let me take one more step and say, you are saying, that is me. I need that prayer. I need Jesus to be my Lord and my Savior. Please, would you take a step and just come to me and let me pray for you. I stand here to receive you. Come to me. Just come. Come to me. Wherever you are, just come. You may not have lifted up your hand. Just come and stand here. Just come. Even if you didn't lift up your hand, but you're saying, that is me. I need something. I need a difference in my life. I need to be touched of God. Just walk. Come. Just come. Break all, all, all protocols. Let your life be redefined. Let Christ do something. Stand here. Just come and stand. There are people who will stand with you. There are people who will receive you. There are people receiving you just to pray with you. Just come. Just come. You are an important person. You cannot continue through all this pain when the master is saying, I will teach you. I will open my, your mind. You will understand. Are you still there? Come surrender to Christ. All to Jesus I surrender. Just come. Just come. Are you there? They are not the only ones. There is still someone struggling. You are feeling... What will people think about me? Let them think. But this is a night that redefines you. This is an opportunity that makes you different. Just come. If you're coming, just come. 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 Thank you, Lord. He loves you. As you come to this altar, he loves you. Despite what you have done, despite what you are, has happened to you, he loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. Yes, Lord. We live love and trust him. Are you still there? We are finishing that song. Just then we pray. Just walk to the altar. If you are still seated, just walk to the altar. Just walk. If you are upstairs, just come down. Just come down. Come and surrender. I say, Lord, I surrender. Just come. Just come and surrender. Come and surrender. Come. Just come and surrender. Oh, Jesus. 
we surrender to you, Lord. We surrender everything to you, Jesus. I've given you the last chance. Just before I make this prayer, are you coming? I don't have to lock you out. Just come. Come. It is important for you. Just come. Thank you. Just come. Just come. Just come. God bless you. Just come. Just come. Come. God bless you. God bless you as you come. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord. We give you glory. We love you, Jesus. For all of you that came to the altar, there's someone standing with you. And the person standing with you is going to pray with you. You are a very important person as you come to this altar. God knows you by name. That is why he created you for a purpose. And he's redefining your story right now. The enemy is losing it because your story is being redefined. All of you that are standing here, I want you to repeat this prayer and the people standing with you will help you to pray. It is your prayer. They are helping you to pray. So with reverence to God because you are calling to the Father who knows the pain you might have gone through. But today you are saying, Jesus, welcome. I accept you. He will deal with it. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I am a sinner. I give you my life. This evening, Lord Jesus, I ask you, come into my life. Forgive my sins. Every sin I know and that that I don't know, I confess to you. Lord Jesus, forgive me. Lord Jesus, accept me just as I am. I welcome you into my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. From this day, I am born again. I am forgiven. I am a child of God. Write my name in the book of life. Thank you, Jesus, for receiving me. In Jesus' name, I pray and believe. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, on this altar are standing your maiden servants. The ones that you've convicted tonight and drawn them to yourself. For your word says, when you are exalted, you draw men to yourself. Thank you for drawing these ones. Thank you for forgiving their sins. Thank you for accepting them just as they are. And right now, we announce to you, Satan, these ones don't belong to you. Remove your dirty hands out of their lives. They are children of the most high God. Lord, we thank you. And as a church, Lord, we receive them in the fellowship of brethren and say they are part of us. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Everyone else, stand where you are. Put your hands above your head. Let us celebrate. Let us celebrate. Let us celebrate! Celebrate! All of you that came to the front, you are born again. Your story has changed. Jesus is Lord over your life. The devil has lost it. You are a child of God. Your story has been redefined. 
glory to Jesus. The people standing with you will help you get you to a place and talk to you just for a minute before they let you go. So someone is standing with you, he will help you, she will help you, and you will get some, something to do. For the rest of us, just lift up your hands. Lord, the hands that are lifted up in this sanctuary. We all go through different pains. We have cried, we have wept. Father, we just pray, may you open our minds that we may be able to understand scripture. Father, sometimes we feel like giving up because we do not know why we face what we face. But tonight, with the Rema word, open our minds. Open our minds that we may not be of those who give up, but those who stand and go the long way. Father, I pray for every man and every woman that sat under this voice, that has heard this word. Some of them have, have business issues, marriage issues, family issues, relationship issues. Father, I pray every emotional pain that any one of them would be having tonight, I release your peace. I release your touch. Touch each and every one of them. Touch their marriages. Touch their relationships. Touch their businesses. Come through their families. Touch their children. That God, out of this she conference, I declare that emotional pain shall not remain there. We receive our victory. We receive our victory. We receive our victory. We receive our victory. We give you glory. We give you honor. And we give you praise. In Jesus name we pray. In Jesus name we pray. Thou art blessed. Hallelujah. You are blessed. Celebrate Jesus. Come on Paki ladies. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on, one last time. We give you glory, Lord. We thank you for the souls that have come to you. Amen. And I have a good, uh, some good news for a sister seated in the sanctuary. KBP 526V. You actually left your car keys on your car. But our security team is very keen taking care of you. So don't worry. Come and see me after the service. Do not panic. We are sorted. And then we will ask the team that came with Irene to kindly join us up at the baptistry. We will serve you a cup of tea. Thank you for coming to support her. Tell your sister there is a, there is a cup of tea for you too. Tell them there is tea for everyone. And tell them I want to see you tomorrow. Right here. Amen. How many promise to bring somebody along tomorrow? I want us to fill the sanctuary with women from all over Nairobi. And then tell your sister, by the way, tomorrow is African theme night. Tell them tomorrow is African. Yeah, so dress African. Come and let us celebrate the African woman. Amen. Now turn to your neighbor and tell them, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow you. I mean you, the beloved of God, all the days of your life. And you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever. And there's nothing, absolutely nothing, the devil can do about it. You are protected. You are shielded. You are embraced. You are surrounded. Before you. Behind you. Beside you. Above you. Beneath you. God has got you covered. Amen. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen and amen. The Lord bless you. Thank you for coming. We'll see you tomorrow, same time. Thank you for coming. Great and marvelous is your name. Great and marvelous is your name.
visualmente.